Hey, Matt, you're alive. I haven't seen you in like three chapters, I think. Whenever we last visited that goddamn tower that fell over. Oh, shit. Okay, I wasn't ready for that. Matt. Oh, Matt. Oh, please. Matt. Nice to see you, too. Are you okay? I wasn't even slightly ready for a quick time event. <laughs> Define okay. <laughs> Jesus, Chess. What the hell happened to you? How the fuck are you still alive? Yeah. Well, here's the two characters that have the least idea of what's going on here. There's something been going on tonight. Someone really fucking with us up here. No. What? It's not someone, it's something. Jess, you, you, you had a pretty rough night. Hey, it's pretty confusing. No, I'm telling you. It's okay. I, I, I didn't mean to scare you. No, oh, God. Can you move? Yeah. Come on, Jess. I wonder, oh, I'm trying to think of how that scene plays out now. What if Mike died? I don't know, like, Mike fought so many Wendigos in that place. Mike has to be able to die in that sanitarium, otherwise that's so free of tension. If Mike died, Sam probably would have just left Josh behind and Josh would be f flipping out, but he's like, no, I've got to warn, I've got to get in contact with everybody. And then Josh just walks out into that pool and just dies, and that's the end of that storyline. There's no one there to even witness it. He dies, he gets killed by Hannah, and no one even knows that it happened, and that's it. Weird that he's like the one body they didn't rip the head off of, though. Is this a totem? That. Some sort of cave in here. That was me. What? I fell through that roof. You fell this far? Jesus. It makes two of us. What? I fell off a goddamn fire tower down here. You're kidding me. These two are having a real bad time, aren't they? What's left of your, what's left of your face at this point? Hey. Uh, bonus honesty for telling them about what was going on. Oh! I can move his head. I never realized that. That's freaky. Oh, it's too real. His, eye, his eyes follow where my joystick goes. That's creepy. I don't like that. I'm looking at you now. He is looking at you, Jonathan. I don't know. <laughs> Beth updates, the Wendigo in the mine had an identical butterfly tattoo. On the right shoulder. Wendigo attack Josh. Tattoo. Identical tattoo, yep. Predicted that way out of the gate. It was so obvious. We're getting pretty far on the collectible stuff then. Yeah, that was... The moment was like, ooh, it's a distinguishing tattoo. And then they introduced like, you turn into Wendigo. It's like, oh, well, obviously, we're, she's she's a Wendigo. That's the whole purpose of the tattoo subplot. Hello? These camera angles are crazy. I gotta say, the environment, the environment design in this game is f incredible. If you look too close at any specific detail, sometimes something looks a little too muddy or undefined or something, but if you look at it, it just as like one solid, like say a desktop wallpaper, like you just see it, you can take it all in as one glance. They're usually, they're usually really beautiful or chilling scenes. All right, well I, these characters have no screen time and very little development, and they're alone together. I wouldn't be surprised if they can both die in this scene. They might die down here without ever reuniting with anybody. For all we know. For all we know, Matt can only survive if he has a flare gun or something. What if that happens? 
but of Matt and Emily. Whoever has the flare gun lives, and whoever doesn't have the flare gun dies. For different reasons. Go, go, go. Oh shit, Wendigos are here. Come on, come on. Oh, we're outside. Shit. It's almost dawn. It's almost dawn. You gotta go. Oh, shit. Hold still is gonna happen. <laughs> Fucking knew it. I was ready for that one. I'm, pre I'm starting to predict you, game. Holy shit. Good thing you made sure Jessica was still alive so she could die in 30 seconds. <laughs> this game is fucking cruel. I wouldn't, maybe if maybe I would have survived if I hid, because they don't detect you when you if you don't move. It's conceivable. God damn, she's good at climbing. Comic is good at climbing. Uh, don't fuck up. This is how I die. Uh. Uh. Fuck. Oh, she just drops right back down. I bet that I only get one shot at that. Okay, so yeah, the, the fucking speed one's really fucking hard quick time events. It's silly. Figured I'd finally try it. Okay, concentrate. Ah! Okay, well we're learning... Apparently climbing has like no consequences if you're not being chased though. God damn, this is genuinely hard. I just had to. I, had, I just had to go full, concentrate there. That's that's tough. All right, we're outside and in work. It's almost dawn, as shown by the streaks. We're sort of starting to see. It's the final hour. People just have to survive this one chapter, and they should be safe. Then we can have a nice, relaxing epilogue where a horror, where the horrible thing is just reintroduced and kills people anyway. Because if I know anything about horror movies, is that people die in the epilogue when you think they're safe. Someone does. The, uh, the final destination approach. I would, I would pick up the pace a little bit more than this. This is your fast running? You can't, like, hustle a bit? That's cool. There's just horrible monsters nearby. No big deal. Man, Jessica died horribly, though. I get the feeling that maybe I could have saved her if I hid. Like, maybe... Wait, that camera angle seems suspicious. Could I, could I walk up that slope? Maybe I can. Can Oh, what's up here? Maybe a totem? Ooh, secret totem. Ooh, horrible looking totem. Oh, it's just a dragonfly, I guess. It's a lost totem. Danger totem, never mind. The Wendigos, the Wendigos are going to be in the house. Yeah, they're going to be in the house. Sometime after, the prospectors came to mine this mountain. Tapped them in and woke the And driven mad murderers. Human flesh. And after all these years, after many more, I grasp beyond my reach. Until one night, my sight. But we were not alone in the woods that night. No! I could 
can save your friends. But I... It is so... It's really ominous, almost like he was actually... It almost does feel like he was hunting the girls, but it said he... It throws me off. He, there's one line that makes it sound like he was there to kill them. Because, like, revenge. But also there's a line that makes it sound like there is there to... Is there a reason to come this way? Oh! Forking path. Okay, let's go back towards the... Let's continue towards the house. Can I go under here? No. Yeah, I'm unclear if he's, uh... I can still see him wanting revenge on the family. No, the people who want revenge are probably old Wendigos now, so that's the revenge tactic. The revenge storyline It was totally invented by Josh. If any miners somehow had reasons to be angry... No, yeah. Yeah, I need to drop the whole... I did not think about revenge. That's clearly a, a Josh thing. Oh, not water again. They did the exact thing I was afraid of by going after Matt. Keep quiet. Come on. Keep quiet in the in the ice water. I know it's horrible. Oh god, she's really down there. She seriously is like three feet tall. She's a tiny, tiny person. Can I go over here? Nope. Alright, go, go, go. We get, need to get to that house. And figure out how to burn it down. That's gonna be what's go going on. She doesn't know that yet, but it's, it's gonna be what we need. Huh. What happened to your pipe? You had a nice pipe that was like really good at de de apparently decapitating skinless wendigos? Would have been nice if you could hold on to that for a little longer. It also would have been nice if Matt could hold on to his goddamn axe. You're the reason why you're not with Emily anymore. So you fucking drop, put down your axe and then that guy used the axe to destroy the tower. Dummy. Still not happy about that guy. Oh god. Plan. That's why you face the slope when you climb down it, so you don't get stuck like that. The thing about climbing down something is that your heels are really bad at catching stuff. Uh oh. Oh, come on, you read the book. You know not to run. You know to hide. Because they can't see you when you don't move. Go, 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 Sam! Oop. Hey! Hey! Oh no! Come on, open up! Guys, come on, are you in there? Let me in! Sam! Worse if we stay out here. Come on. So is Emily in here? Someone's got to be in here. Okay. We are running out of characters real fast. Out of eight characters, four are confirmed dead. Mike, what happened to Josh? I got him. God, what an awful way to go. So we just lost jo we just lost Jess and Josh. Not good. So we're down to Mike, Sam. What do you think we should do? We should check the basement. Matt and Emily? Really? Might be someone left down there. They just realized half the remaining characters are the Matt and Emily couple. Oh man, I've made all the worst decisions. <laughs> I was like, alright, let's get Matt, Emily, Jess, and Matt and uh, Mike killed first, because I'm sick of those characters. Uh I, I'm one for four so far, and three for four at getting all the other characters I liked killed. Because we've lost... We've lost Ashley, and Josh, and Chris. <laughs> wow. I mean, they asked me which ones are my favorite, I guess. Although I don't know if that had any impact on anything. That might have been a red herring trick, too. Man. I will say, Josh feels like someone you almost can't save. I have no idea. That might be a scripted death because of its thematic resonance. Um, 
How do you rate our chances of survival? Hmm? I'm trying not to think about it. Oh my god! Run! Close the door, close the door, close the door, close the door, close the door. Oh shit! Good idea. Good girl. That's a lot of Wendigos. Uh, do I have to pick which way to go? Wait, am I playing her now? No? So was she just standing there? Oh, it's in the house. Stand still. Here's your Jurassic Park moment. The raptors are in the house. This is a nightmare. What they fight? We need to burn it down. I guess she got away, kind of. Unless there's one right there. How do I save Mike? Just straight up died. Fuck! No! Honestly, I thought Mike had the plan figured out, so I thought that he was gonna make a break for it once I created the distraction. Oh, it's gonna recap everyone's deaths. But yeah, my my logic there in that decision, and, and you only know what your mistakes are afterwards. Bye, Ashley. Uh, I thought that Mike knew the plan, so I thought he was going to make a break for it once they were distracted, because they were going to be chasing me. Bye, Jessica. Hey, three out of five people survived. The fucking Emily couple survived. Sorry, Mike. My bad. Whoops. <laughs> he 
held it right up to my face. Right here, right in front of my nose, and he could have shot me. He almost shot me, the prick. I mean, you go out with a guy for however long and you think you know him, but man, this one really takes the cake. I was right there, and I could have done something. I tried to do something. It wasn't good enough. I thought we were close. After his sisters disappeared, he'd come and talk to me. He said I was the only one who understood him. I thought... I thought we had a connection. If you need someone to talk to... I'm fine. Sometimes, after a traumatic experience... I said I'm fine. Where's Matt? Is he okay? Are they done looking at him? I'm just a little worried because, you know, I'm his girlfriend. Did he tell you that? I mean, I probably wasn't his favorite person there for a couple minutes, but he knows how devoted I am to him. He knows. He, he said he knows, right? It was my fault Mike died. I wasn't supposed to move, but I did. And he saved me. So it's my fault that he died. You need to listen to me. I don't care if you believe me or not. It doesn't matter because you will. You need to go down to the mines. What's in the mines, Sam? I've seen what's down there. And I'd give anything to unsee it. Why is she telling them to go into the mines? That seems like a bad plan. Alright guys, well this was Until Dawn. And I managed to get three out of eight, out of eight characters to survive. <laughs> oh yeah. I thought that save- I, I genuinely thought that save Mike was a- was a lie. I thought, oh, you're gonna run and save Mike, right? Like, what does save Mike mean? I think it actually meant, like, run towards him is what it seemed to prompt. Like, I guess that's one of the tough things when you make a decision and you're like, I don't know what the context of the prompt is sometimes. Uh, to talk about how Jess died, I think that if Matt hid, I think if I hid, I would have gotten one of those, like, stay still moments. And if that happened, I might have been able to get both Jess and Matt out alive. And that would have been good. And then with Mike, I think I could have saved him by picking save Mike. Maybe maybe save Mike would have just meant standing still for a while. Or maybe picking save Mike would have meant make a distraction so Mike kill so that Sam dies instead. I won't know until I play and make alternate decisions whether that leads is whether that's the difference between Mike living and Sam living or both living or or what. On the topic of the stay still motions, I eventually got a better realization of what was going on, partly because it takes so long to edit these videos with the audio and everything, that uh, uh, I was looking at the little little light bar prompt for the PS4 controller, and I realized that I, it's not just about holding completely still. I can move the controller slightly to sort of recenter it within the little animation on the bottom of the screen, which actually makes it easier to stay alive. And that's why I was able to survive that ending part, which was like the longest case of that ever. I can't believe two-thirds of the survivors were the Emily-Matt couple of all people. <laughs> what did I... Oh, man. I feel like I failed <laughs> just for that. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I am going to do a Season 2 playthrough of this game, so... I probably should have mentioned this faster in the credits because some people have clicked away already, but I guess you'll see Season 2 anyway showing up in your subscriptions if you're subscribed to me. Please subscribe to me if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, my plan... It's... it's In some ways it'll be a smarter playthrough, and in some ways it won't be. My primary goal won't be to specifically get everyone to live. My primary goal in the second season will be to just make it be different. Uh, having a perfect run could be boring, because it could mean that, that literally hours of the playthrough will be exactly the same for all I know, and that's not fun to watch. Uh, so rather than doing a perfect run, or trying to do a perfect run and failing, and then just defeating the purpose anyway, I'm just going to do what I can to 
make the opposite decisions as often as possible throughout the throughout the story that I did during this playthrough, just to like stretch the muscles of the game and see exactly how much the story does change, because they they promised that it would, but I want to figure out just how much it changes. Um, it should be a shorter series. This one was longer because I was looking for clues everywhere and I was. Uh, pausing on the menu to theorize about what the implications of the clues are and stuff like that. But that's obviously not going to happen twice. One, because we already have seen the clues, so rereading them is pointless. And two, because we've already finished the story, so solving the mystery about who is what and stuff like that isn't going to come up again. Uh, we already know who the clown mask guy is. We already know who the flamethrower guy is. We already know what the supernatural thing is. And we even know what the ghosts were, which is that they weren't ghosts and all that stuff. So, like, all that stuff's solved. So, no theorizing. So, I, I would anticipate the second playthrough will be significantly faster. I think my current plan is to do one episode per chapter. So, I think, I think I'm gonna, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna make it a ten episode playthrough of season two. Where every, I won't even really pay attention to how long the chapters are. It'll just be whatever, however long the chapter was, that'll be how long the episode is. And we'll see how much the story changes. And I, I'll hope that you will be interested in joining me on that little journey. And if not, well, Metal Gear Solid 5 comes out very soon. Uh, I've already started uploading Ground Zeroes. Uh, actually, by the time this video is seen, it, that should already be done. Which is that, that Ground Zeroes is the prologue to Metal Gear Solid 5. And uh, Metal Gear Solid V Phantom Pain, which is the main game, comes out on Tuesday, and I'll be planning on making a lot of videos of that, because I've been anticipating a Metal Gear release for a while. It's been a long time. There has not been a main number Metal, Metal Gear game in the time that I've been running this channel. In fact, there may have not been a... I don't think there's been a single Metal Gear anything since I've been running this channel. Uh, I think even Metal Gear Rising is technically older than that. But anyway, also... Uh, another good reason to subscribe if you've gotten this far. Uh, I do other episodic story content, so you might want to look into, for example, Life is Strange and stuff like that. Similar concepts of, of going through a bunch of story and making decisions about characters. Not as not as horror-based as this. And also, I uh, there's a DLC coming out at some point for this game. I'm not sure if it was a prologue or an epilogue. I don't, I don't remember if it takes place before or after the story of the main game, but uh, the DLC is coming out at some point, and I will absolutely play that, because of course I will. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching like always. I'll see you next time, and uh, that's it. I'm going to start, I'm, I'm literally about to just start playing the game again from the beginning while it's all fresh in my mind. So I look forward to a second playthrough of Until Dawn, where we find out either that the game is full of amazing branching choices where so much crazy changes can happen, or that it's all an illusion, like a lot of Telltale games where it's like they make it feel like we're making important choices, but it all actually ends the same way. If nothing else, I want to see that credit sequence for different characters surviving and talking to the police or whatever about it, and maybe even having different... If the same people survive in some cases, they probably have, they might even have different things to say about what happened. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching like always, and I'll see you next time, and I think that might actually be the end of the credits, too. How's that for- how's that for timing? <laughs> what? Hannah and Beth are both played by the same actor? <laughs> huh. Oh yeah, one last little piece of follow-up on the butterfly effect. At what price? Mike hacked off his own fingers. Mike still had a usable machete. Mike found another way to the sanatorium. Sam rescued Mike in the mine. That's where that ends. To the rescue. Mike successfully chased after Jessica. Jessica was still alive. Oh, if, if Mike didn't chase Jessica successfully, would Jessica just be dead? Like, would you just find her body down there instead? Oh, wow. Because you go to that elevator, sh you find the elevator shaft that she went down. Or the roof or whatever it was. Maybe her body's just there if Mike doesn't chase her successfully. And she's just not there, and that's it. There's no Jessica. Because... Maybe Mike, with his light and stuff, kind of scared the Wendigo away at the last minute, and then she just happened to fall. Jessica failed to escape the second time. Yeah, that went, that went really poorly for her. That was her entire storyline. It's like, I'm gonna have sex with Mike. Oh no, Wendigo happened. Oh no, Wendigo happened again. Like, JK, I'm not dead. Oh wait, I'm dead. Look at that. Look at that. There's a whole butterfly we haven't even explored yet. That's interesting. They must inv That must be a whole... There must be a whole butterfly dedicated to either Chris, 
Yeah, it has to be either Chris or Ashley. Maybe Ashley, uh... Yeah, either Ashley or Chris does get left behind, probably, during that, uh, scene with the grate. And then, that's where Ashley died. Save yourself. Matt jumped to safety, Matt found Jessica, and survived until dawn. Matt, you're alive! So many people were cheering for you. <laughs> Sam failed to discover a vital- uh, discover a vital record? Oh. There was some important information that would have saved Josh, apparently. I'm wondering, there was the water area. I kind of noticed that there was like an extra fork on the side. I wonder if I could have gotten out of the water in a different place, and maybe there was something over there. So Josh recognized Hannah too late and was killed. I don't understand why recognizing Hannah would affect whether or not she, the Wendigo kills you, though. That's weird. Was he gonna fucking talk her down? That does indicate that apparently Josh can survive, though, if these butterfly effects actually reflect real choices and not just scripted events. So, Sam escaped, and Mike died in the lodge. Ashley died in the mine. Emily escaped. Chris died before making it back to the lodge. Yeah, Chris only knew Wendigos existed for like 10 minutes before he died to them. He, of all people, he turned out to be the first confirmed kill. Alright, guys. So... Now for realsies. <laughs> Thanks for watching like always, and I'll see you next time. Check the playlist in the description to find the uh, playlist for the series where uh, Season 2 will also be listed as they go up.